Good afternoon, Pastor David. <laughs> Hi, John. Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. And you know, Pastor, on uh, Sunday, I want to speak a little bit about worship. Sunday we had great worship, and even on Good Friday. But before we go further, I want us to sh our people to see a clip of worship, and then I can ask for your feedback on that. So uh, we're going to show you guys a clip of what worship, well, not of what worship is. Is it our Sunday, a clip from our Sunday yes, morning? Yes, Sunday morning clip. Oh, it ought, to, <laughs> it ought to, I don't know what to say. I think that they'll find it interesting. Yes. Who Why knows? You, we'll see what happens. Why don't you guys take a look at this clip? It's from our Sunday morning. So what did you think of the clip? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, those who were watching were a bit surprised. <laughs> oh, I, I came upon that clip. It must have been sent to me. I forget, John, but it just as an example of a flesh, yes. you know, to be honest with you. And I, I, it makes you kind of, you laugh. You can't help but find it being ridiculous. But so many are posting that particular clip and others like it as examples of spirit-filled worship. Mm, so right. what do I think about it? I think it's an exhibition of, of flesh, plain and simple. Well, you know, one of the questions I had asked or I wrote down is, is worship, is it a tool for worship or is it a tool for entertainment? Calling it spirit-led. And, you know, you look at these things, Pastor, because even in Jesus spoke that the spirit won't glorify, won't, I, the the Spirit is never glorifying itself, himself, but rather he glorifies me, as Jesus yes, says. Course, yes. And you see these acts of worship, and it's nothing but glorifying the flesh, but they call it Spirit-led. You know, you see similar kinds of exhibitions, not in the same extreme in terms of the dancing around by itself, but even more extreme, when the prophets of Baal mm. were screaming, and in, in the case of... Um, of them being there at Mount Carmel, they're, um, they're actually cutting themselves and bleeding and all of that, but they're praying, aren't they? You know, they all hear us mm -hmm. and all of that. And so, you know, I, I don't want to come off in a cruel fashion, and I know there are those who think, oh, you're judging your brothers and, and all of that. In fact, um, uh, Jesus said that we are not to judge using human standards, but our judgment and that we do have judgment is, is to be spiritual, John 7, 24. So um, I would say this, as in, in our day, I believe that there was a book written, by the way, called The Hidden Gem, The Hidden Gem of Worship. Gem of worship. You know, who, who is being worshipped and what is fueling the worship is a very important to answer. And so... When you allow your flesh uh, room, then the question has to be asked, who, who is getting the attention? Mm -hmm. If you're sitting in church and somebody stands up in front of you and starts dancing around, who gets the attention? Even last night, I, I began a study by pointing out that in Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul begins by saying somewhere around verse 10, I think it was, 10 or 11, sorry for not being precise in that, but, but he started out as it is written. And I was sharing with the, the body that the centerpiece of church services is always Jesus Christ, right. and the centerpiece of what is making the service something that is, um, is a service that he would be uh, welcoming and appreciating in and all is going to always be based on the the Word of God. And, right. and I, I last night I, I did something just to kind of awaken the church to certain, uh, I would say, basically, quote-unquote, psychological realities, and that is this. You know, if you stand behind the pulpit and you share, the centerpiece of all that's taking place isn't you. It's that your Word, the Bible, the Word of God is there. 
right in front of the whole church in the center of the of the platform area and so I as you remember John last night I I walked mm -hmm. off to the side I never do that obviously and I came back walked on the other side and I said what am I doing right now I'm drawing attention to myself right. you're watching me walk across the platform from this place I'm prowling to that place and your attention is now on me your attention is on what I'm doing and the way that I'm speaking and the reason I don't prowl a platform is because I'm not entertaining and I'm certainly not attempting to draw attention to myself you know the Lord says he will not share his glory with anybody else and a minister is not an entertainer we are not a public speaker what we are is a proclaimer mm. of the Word of God and so when you put your attention on man and man's efforts when that man walks around the stage and stands on the lip and speaks to you and draws your attention really are you watching are you are you watching him or are you really hearing what the Word of the Lord has to say so I have a real problem with uh, platform uh, prowlers I really do because I'm so carnal I actually notice them walking around in worship if I have someone standing in front of me and I'm seated and all of a sudden they're up and they're dancing around sometimes it may be um, you know a, a shapely woman right in front of me I'm a man I don't need distractions my flesh certainly doesn't need a place to to express itself so I've always felt it proper that that we together if we all stand fine if we're all seated fine but this um, this word that oh they're just so filled with the spirit that they're moving you know because the spirit moves them to dance like David and this and that <laughs> you know the, the bottom line is anything that takes away from the word and the spirit is not of the Lord you know our God is a God of order right. and so we we worship him in spirit and truth and so exhibitions like that where people are jumping up and down and and you know doing their their dance steps John to be honest with you Jesus isn't being worshiped that person is drawing attention to themselves it's really it's so obvious and yet some people blame God for their flesh I don't get it. You know, interesting that you mentioned that, Pastor, I'm keeping on time, is people can identify that, well, then you're not spirit-led. Mm -hmm. If you're not jumping in the aisles, barking, yeah. running around. Yeah. But you had pointed out, I think somebody came to you and says, the this, this Spirit's not even here, and you pointed out, do you see people praying? Yeah, there was a time when um, people were thinking that, that for the Spirit to be present, there needed to be certain manifestations. And we had had a, a Sunday night service, and somebody approached me and said this is my first time here and I said oh great well it's nice to have you yes I just want to ask a question and he said what was that uh, when does the spirit move here and I said when does the spirit move here and she said yes when does the spirit move here and I said were you in the the uh, church today and she goes yes I said uh, so did you did you spend time worshiping the Lord in song Oh, yes, I did. I said, did you um, sit through a Bible study and were you instructed? Oh, yes, I was. I said, look around you right now. You see those people over there? They're fellowshipping. You see those people over there? They're praying for one another. Um, I gave an invitation. Did people come forward to give their hearts to Christ? Yes, they did. I said, you know, when you say when does the spirit move here what you're really asking me is when do you speak in tongues mm -hmm. right and she said yeah I said the spirit has been moving through the entire service and even after it's been concluded the Holy Spirit is moving in different ways right now so you can't put all of your attention on one gift of the spirit you need to see that the Lord is moving in a variety of places in a variety of ways and and again John I really believe because of the lack of teaching of the Word of God and the emphasis on personal fulfillment 
narcissism in the pews, right. that people make decisions where they're going to go, not based on whether the study of the Word of God is accurate and proper and encouraging and edifying me to, to the point of serving God, but rather, how did I feel when I walked out of that place? Did I feel excited and, you know, or did I feel equipped? You have to ask mm. those questions of wow. yourself. And so if somebody thinks that mm. going into a circus is edifying and the church can become that, I'd have to differ with that mm. scripturally. I like that. Uh, it's uh, entertained or edified. Exactly. And so, well, thank you, Pastor. And, and uh, you know, even though we opened up the, this time with a little bit of laughter, it, it's so true in some churches. And, and again, uh, where's the word of God? And thankful for those churches, our church, that do, that do teach God's I'm Word. For it. And uh, and want to encourage you guys to even come join us on Sunday as we have our services at 8.30 and 10.45. You're taking us through the book of Mark. Yep. And uh, and come hear a Bible study. Or if you have a church nearby you, you may be watching, I don't know where, and it's a Bible teaching church, want to encourage you guys to go check it out. Uh, if you're in our area, we'd love to have you. Come join us and yep. we'd love to come here, come join us as we worship and we get into God's word. Amen. So pastor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you and God bless you.